Hey, I'm going to invite you to uh, take a seat and grab your Bibles or your Bible apps and turn to the Gospel of Luke chapter 2. Luke 2 is our text, and uh, if you're uh, here and you don't have a Bible with you or Bible app on your device, that's perfectly fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you, turn to page 1018, and you'll be able to find Luke chapter 2. As always, if you're here and you don't have a Bible or a Bible app and you want to take a Bible with you, then that's our gift to you. We want you to have God's Word, be able to read God's Word. If you're joining us online, we want you to have a Bible as well. So if you don't have one and you want one, let us know because we will get a Bible to you because we want everyone to have God's Word, read God's Word, because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Hey, uh, it is Christmas season, and so you know all about uh, Christmas Eve services next weekend. You know that we're going to be having them at uh, McCulloch, the classic service at 1, here at 2, 3.30, and 5, and Parker at 4. Uh, but you might not know that we're really encouraging those who have not been baptized, who've, who believe in Jesus but haven't followed in baptism yet, we'd love for you to declare your faith in Christ on Christmas Eve. Now, we want you to do it because we want you to be obedient to Jesus, but we also want you to do it because it's a great statement to those people who'll be gathered, who'll be watching, and who'll be wondering what is it that happened in their life that makes them want to declare their faith in that way. And that's a, that's a powerful tool. So if you're in that place and you are a follower, you know Jesus is your Savior, and you've never been baptized publicly, we'd love to, for you to do that uh, Christmas Eve. Just let us know, grab one of the Connect cards, find us after the service, and we'd be glad to take care of that. And then the following weekend, New Year's weekend, because we go Christmas weekend, we go New Year's weekend, we're crazy enough to do our regular schedule. And since you guys come on Saturday night, it's New Year's Eve on Saturday night in two weeks. And, uh, and I know, I have big plans. So go ahead and dress up to the nines and come worship and then go to your parties. And do all this stuff. You know, just we'll just have a fashion show or whatever, but I don't care. Or if you're going to come, if you're going to like stay at home and, and just watch it in your pajamas, come like that too. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> we just kind of think it'd be cool to uh, worship Jesus together, celebrate communion together on uh, the last night of 2022 or the first day of 2023 because we're doing services on New Year's Day as well because we're crazy enough to do that. Hey, uh, I got to brag on you guys. I just, uh, this occurred to me backstage, I was looking at one of the, the gift bags that we ask you guys to fill out, and you guys filled out a thousand gift bags that went to uh, the Wallapai Nation last Sunday night, you guys threw a party for them, uh, that went down to Mexico, and they had a big party today in San Luis, Mexico, they went to an orphanage, they went to foster care, they went down to, to the Crit Nation and Poston, and for the, the Head Start program there, uh, they've just been used all over this area to bless kids, and I want to say thanks, your guys' generosity is incredible. Absolutely love it. Hey, when you were younger, did you ever play the like telegram or telephone game? Anybody know what that game is? Beside, beside, okay, a few of you do. All right, so that's where you start. Like we, we were starting over here, and we would whisper a message into the ears of the people on this end, and they would just like pass it down the line all the way down. And we got over here, then you guys would write down the message. And then we would laugh because the message that they got and the message you wrote down would not be anything alike, usually. <laughs> At least as a youth pastor, that's what happened when I played the game, and so it was a lot of fun. Uh, but it, uh, it illustrates how easy it is to lose the message. It's easy to lose the message. Well, as I mentioned, Christmas is one week away, and I want us to talk about the message of Christmas because it has been lost in so many ways. I mean, if you listen to advertisers, Christmas is about the toys, the jewelry, or even the cars. Although I think it'd be insane to surprise your spouse with a car on Christmas. Not saying I'm opposed to it, but it would be insane. Dave Ramsey's not in favor of it either. Uh, you know, and if you watch kids' movies, I mean, what is Christmas about? It's about believing in Santa and Christmas magic, or elves finding their father, or Grinches growing a heart, or possibly just not getting left home alone, right? You know, they, they, those are the messages. And uh, let's face it, if you watch Hallmark Christmas movies, all right, go ahead and confess. Who's, all right, yeah, all right. If you watch the Hallmark Christmas movies, then Christmas is all about living in a small town with snow. 
pursuing your dream, whatever that is, and finding true love on Christmas Eve. Now, none of those is the true message of Christmas. The message of Christmas is recorded in Luke chapter 2. This is God's birth announcement for Jesus. Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 8, Luke writes, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. The angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. You see, the Christmas message is heard in the angelic declaration. I love this. The angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. That's the message of Christmas. Now, I love that God chose a bunch of blue-collar workers who were a bunch of nobodies to announce Jesus' birth to. Okay, if this, this ought to tell us something about God's economy, about how God sees the world, because he didn't announce Jesus' birth to kings. He didn't announce Jesus' birth to, you know, a bunch of rich and powerful people, movers and shakers. He didn't even announce it to the priests in Jerusalem. He announced it to a bunch of people working the graveyard shift, smelling of campfires and sheep. I, I mean, isn't that beautiful? And, and then the Christmas message from the angel begins with, fear not. Don't be afraid. <laughs> You've got to know those shepherds were terrified, right? I mean, there they are, out on the hillside. You know, it's getting kind of late. They're being kind of lazy, sitting around the fire talking. Maybe they're just, just standing there. And, and suddenly, an angel appeared out of nowhere. The glory of the Lord shone around them. It's night, and the whole area lit up. I mean, think UFO encounter, <laughs> right? I mean, we got lights that can light up a whole area. They don't have that. That's not even possible. And suddenly it's bright and there's this guy who's glowing, talking to them. And, and they, were, they were scared to death. We'd be too. So these guys are freaking out. And what is the first words from the angel to them? Fear not. Fear not. Um, one of the things that is often missed as we talk about Christmas is how often God tells us to not be afraid. How often God tells us not to be afraid. In fact, the entire Christmas story is wrapped up in this, this message of Christmas that challenges our fears, that wants to challenge your fears. So today, God is reminding us that he did not create us to live in fear. I mean, just look at the Christmas story. Okay, the Christmas story begins in Luke chapter 1. This guy named Zechariah is going into the temple. He's serving, and, uh, and an angel appears to him and says to him, fear not. Later on in Luke chapter 1, an angel appears to Mary and says, hail, O blessed one. The Lord is with you, and she's afraid and troubled by this. And he says, don't be afraid. Joseph is going to divorce Mary because she's pregnant, and he's not the dad, and he knows that. And, and an angel appears to him and says, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. And then here on the hillside, Luke chapter 2, 
What happens? The shepherds are terrified, and the angel says, fear not. So what are you afraid of? Right now in your life that's going on, with, wrapped up with busyness and family and work and, and finances and the economy and all that, what are you afraid of? Because God is saying to you right now, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Are you afraid for your health or the health of a loved one? God is saying, fear not. Are you afraid for financial struggles, you know, paying your rent, your mortgage, or your insurance, your car, and still being able to feed your family? God is saying, don't be afraid. Are you afraid for your job, of losing a job, of not being able to find a job? Are you afraid of losing your house or maybe your marriage? God is saying, fear not. Are you afraid for the political situation in America, the future of our country, your future? Are you afraid for death? Maybe not that you're going to die, but how you're going to die. God says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. See, whatever you're afraid of, or whatever you're afraid for, God encourages us to not be afraid. And, and here's the thing. We can go, well, yeah, it's nice that you tell me not to be afraid, but why should I not be afraid? And, and that's the good news. Because the message of Christmas is good news of great joy. Good news. I mean, you did catch that from the angels, right? Behold, I bring you good news of great joy. And by the way, it's for all people. See, the message, the Christmas message is definitely good news, which challenges our inner skeptics and closet Grinches. Right? Because you know who you are. And, and, and I'm just going to say, there's, there's a lot more Grinch in us than we want to admit. There's a lot more skeptic in us than we want to admit. And so we come to a place of faith. We come to a place where we're worshiping Jesus, and Jesus wants us to have faith. And part of that is believing the good news of great joy. But it's so easy to fixate on problems and lose sight of the good news. Let me just, let me just say that again, because this is part of our problem in following Jesus day to day. We take our eyes off of Jesus, and we look at our problems, and we fixate on our problems, and we get caught up in our problems, and we get overwhelmed by the bad news cycle that is constant, barging uh, into our lives and, and convincing us that the world is terrible. I mean, now let's be honest. The world is terrible, okay? I mean, it's a mess. There's inflation. There's corruption. There's wars, there's terrorism, there's disease, there's crime, and there's politics, never-ending politics. And so it's tempting to become angry and cynical and distrusting. And into that temptation of anger and cynicism and distrust, the angel proclaims, I've got good news of great joy for you. For you. Right? Did you catch that? For all the people, you qualify. You're a people. If you don't believe me, just look at the person next to you and ask them. They'll tell you. You're a people. So it, this is good news of great joy for you. You go, what is that great good news? The good news is it's hopeful because God loves you. Yes, he loves you. It's not just a theory. It's not just something that applies to other people. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the creator of heaven and earth loves you. It's personal. He values you and he wants you to have life. He wants you to have hope. So the good news is hopeful because God loves you. And the good news is redemptive because God forgives you. I mean, we are forgiven of all of our sins. When we call on the name of Jesus, then we're made new. We're new creations. The old has passed away. All things become new. And we, we're, the slate is wiped clean. Completely clean. We don't deserve it, but God forgives us. And the good news is comforting. Because God is with us. No matter where you are in life, no matter what you're going through, you are not alone. God is with you. That is good news. And so the angel says, look, behold, I bring you good news of great joy that's for all people. So do you hear the good news? Okay, so do you hear the good news? Yeah. Okay, well, okay. Some of Tougher question, do you believe the good news? 
Okay, see, that, that, that's where it starts mattering. So if you believe the good news, does your face know this? Does your attitude know this? See, I mean, this is where it starts getting real because some of us, okay, we need to turn off the news or the Hallmark movies, okay? Some of us need to get away from social media and all the noise of anger and frustration, and we need to focus on the message of Christmas, which is good news of great joy because a Savior is born to us. A Savior is born. I'm sure you caught that. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Jesus is born. Jesus is born to save us from our sins. Praise God. Jesus is born to rescue us from deserved punishment. Jesus is born to reconcile us to God. That's what he does. See, this is the good news. And, and it's stated in, in, throughout Scripture. How about some of the favorites? John 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. See, God sent a Savior. That's good news. Not to judge us, not to condemn us, but to rescue us. And if we believe in him, we have eternal life. How about Romans 8, 1? For there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you're in Christ, if you embrace Jesus, that means there is no condemnation for you. That means you escape judgment of hell. I mean, that is great because we were dead in our trespasses and sins, but we've been made alive through Jesus. And, and if you don't quite get that, let me just put it this way. I deserve to go to hell. I earned hell by my actions, by my choices, by my rebellion, by my sin. But because of Jesus, I'm receiving heaven. See, that's good news. And, and then I traded my filthy rags of unrighteousness for Jesus' righteousness, not because I offered him, but because he offered me. And he took my sin on himself, and he paid my penalty so that I could be declared righteous in Christ. See, that's good news. And, and, and this good news is because of Jesus, I've been adopted into God's family, and my destiny is changed forever. By the way, all that's true for you if Jesus is your Savior. And this message of Christmas is for you because unto you a Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. So let me ask you a question. Is the message of Christmas personal to you? Okay, this is, this is the, the, the significant part of this. Do you know the Savior personally? Okay, so Jesus has changed your life? Okay. And I praise God with you. But if you can't say yes to those questions, or if you say yes, but you're really lying, or you're not sure. You're saying yes, and you're kind of hopeful, but you're not certain. Can I just encourage you that today would be the day that you surrender to Jesus? Because we want you to join us in the celebration of the good news. And if you're struggling and you're like, well, I believe all that, but I don't have the good news and I don't feel the good news and I want to, then, um, look, there's people you can talk to. Make an appointment to talk to one of the pastors. We've got counselors available. Uh, we've got prayer team after the service. We would love to help you get in touch with that good news. So that's the true message of Christmas. Fear not. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be for all the people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior. He is Christ the Lord. So now we don't have to be afraid because we have and know the good news that a Savior has been born for us. So the birth of Jesus changes everything. But the story isn't over. See, next thing we see is that the shepherds validated the message. Look at verse 15 and 16. The angels leave, and it said, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, hey, let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, 
which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Now, maybe you've read that a hundred times, heard it preached, heard it talked about, but you've never really thought about how significant it was that the shepherds went and validated the message. They heard the message, but then they said, oh, okay, this is really cool. Now, let's go see if, if what they told us is true. And they went to Bethlehem, and they found exactly what the angels told them. And, and that amazed them even more, because here was this baby wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger, and, and uh, they said, okay, this is what the angels said. This is what they told us. So they heard the message, and they went to Bethlehem and confirmed the sign. So, uh, by the way, a lot of you have already said that you do believe the good news, but if you believe the good news, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins, was raised from the dead, and you've made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then please understand that your life is the validation of the Christmas message. Your life is the validation of the message of Jesus. The way you live your life, the words that you speak, the integrity in your work, the faithfulness of your relationships, all of it is validation of the message of Jesus. Or it invalidates the message of Jesus. See, if we call ourselves Christ followers, then our lives are meant to validate the truth of the gospel. If we call ourselves, you know, uh, Christians, then our lives are supposed to reflect the character of Christ. I mean, because that's what it means to be a little Christ, Christian. If we identify as people of God, then we should car carry out our lives living out the characteristics of God. That, that's how this works. And so when people come to see, they're going to believe because we validate the message that they hear. Uh, the message of Christmas is true. Is the reality of that message reflected in your life? See, honestly, I, I think this is a, a conversation that <coughs> you and the Holy Spirit need to have this week. I mean, he may be talking to you right now, but this is one of those ongoing conversations. It may take some time for you to say to God, am I representing your son? Am I validating the message of Christmas? Here at Calvary, we believe you can't represent Jesus unless you reflect his character. And one of the weaknesses that the church in America has is that we have a lot of people who are calling themselves followers of Jesus whose lives don't reflect the character of Jesus at all. And part of the issue is we got churches who are saying you're representing Jesus and they're not loving people and they're not caring for people and they're not showing the compassion of Christ toward people because they're angry and they're political. And the message of Jesus is hope and love and we need to go ahead and lean into that. Otherwise, we're not going to be validating the message. So are you representing Jesus well? I pray that you and God will have an interesting conversation this week about that. So the shepherds went, they validated the message, and then the shepherds shared the message. They didn't stop at validation. Verse 17. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child, and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. You know, the, the scene is not just uh, a couple of shepherds and, you know, Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. The scene is, as they're coming through town, as they're talking about it, there's a group of shepherds. They're telling people, people are gathering, and when they get there and they see it and then they go away, they're telling people what they've seen. Hey, angels appeared to us, so everybody thinks the shepherds have been drinking. And, and then they go and they talk about this baby and they talk about this family and they found it and, and people are like, okay, wow, that's really uh, interesting. So, and they wondered at what the shepherds told them. But here's the thing, the shepherds told them. The shepherds didn't keep the message to themselves. And, and, and see, here's the point, the Christmas message is true. Most of us in this room already agree with that. Most of us in this room have already affirmed it. Most of us in this room have already said, yes, uh, I believe it. 
Jesus has changed my life. Well, then if the message is true, is it, if it's real in your life, if you've experienced the good news of great joy, honestly, you can't keep it to yourself. You really can't keep it to yourself. So who are you sharing the message of Christmas with? And see, this is where it gets really sticky. Because I know how busy we get. And I know that we go like, oh, did you see this movie on, uh, about Christmas? Oh, did you watch this with your kids? Oh, did you, you know, do, put the tree up? Oh, did you get it all decorated? Oh, did you come to this party? And, and we do all these things, and somewhere in there, the message of Christmas gets lost in our lives because we never tell anyone about the good news of great joy. We never invite anybody who doesn't know Jesus to come and see the Savior. Now, here's the thing. We don't know if they're going to say yes or no because we don't even ask them. We don't know if they're going to accept an invitation to come with us to church next week uh, and, and celebrate Christmas because we haven't had the courage to walk across the street and say, hey, what are you doing uh, next Saturday night? Now, some of you are great at inviting people. In fact, you annoy your friends, and that's okay. As long as they're still your friends. But who are you sharing the message of Christmas with? I mean, we already told you, next, next weekend, uh, we got a 1 o'clock service at McCulloch. We got 2, 3, 30, and 5 services here. We got a 4 o'clock service in Parker. Who are you inviting to come with you? And if you go, oh, I'm traveling, so I'm not, well, then that's fine. Then who are you going to take to church where you're going? You're like, well, I wasn't planning on going to church. I'm not at home. Great, they got churches where you're going. You can be an influence on the people around you and say, hey, let's, let's go worship. You see, when the message of Christmas, the true message of Christmas takes hold in our lives, we can't keep it to ourselves. We've got to tell people, even if they think we're crazy. So who are you inviting to come with you next week? Hey, if you're watching online, who are you inviting to watch with you next week? I mean, that would be really cool if you think about it and you just go, hey, I'm going to invite some friends to come over and I'll fix a meal and we'll eat and we'll watch the service. Why not? You're able to do that. It's not, it doesn't just have to be you. And by the way, who are you praying for that they will receive the good news? All of us have friends and family that don't know Jesus and are living lives of desperation and lostness, and, and we're just like, uh, well, okay, but are you, are you taking them before God on a constant basis and saying, God, I want you to heal this person. I want you to save this person. I want you to reveal yourself to this person. Because if you're doing that, it's going to change the way you talk to other people about the message of Christmas. How are you helping to proclaim the reality of a Savior? And look, I know you guys are helping. I know that you're, you filled out gift bags that had John 3.16 on them and sent them all over the Southwest. That's cool. And, and we give away gift cards so that people who are in need can, can have a hand up. That's, that's awesome. But on the individual level, with people that will never come across Calvary any other way than you, are you going to be like the shepherds and share the message of Christmas? You see, we have an opportunity. The good news is just as relevant as the very first Christmas. So let's make a difference this Christmas. Remember what the angel said, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior. He is Christ the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We can't believe that you love us. Because you know us. You know everything about us. And yet you still sent your son into this world in the midst of our rebellion and our defiance and our sin and all of its disgustingness. And he took our punishment upon himself so that we could have life, so that we could have forgiveness, so that we could be filled with hope, so that we could receive the good news. And today we pray that you would fill our hearts with the good news. God, let it resonate in our souls. Let us not be afraid and let us know that, that we have a Savior. And let us leave this place committed to invite our friends, our family, our neighbors to discover the good news. God, it, we don't know how they'll respond, but we're going to trust that to you. We're just going to invite, and then we're going to expect you to work miracles 
because you're that kind of God. So thank you for loving us. Help us not to hold anything back from you. Help us to bring it all and lay it down so that you can truly change our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.